What'd you think of that little sequence? Kind of cool, right? Well, today I'm going to show you exactly how to create that in DaVinci Resolve. It's actually pretty easy. Let's jump to Resolve. Check it out. In DaVinci Resolve here, I'm in the Edit tab, and I already have all of the assets that I want to use in my media pool. I downloaded the flower exploding, and you can see right here, it just explodes. It doesn't go back together like you saw in the first little clip there of our video. So first thing I need to do is take this red rose exploding and drop it in my timeline. Now, I do my other sound effects and things, but we're going to get to them in a second. The first thing I want to do is get the visual right. I want to see that rose explode and then go back together. So to do that, we're gonna just make a cut and then reverse part of our clip. So if I look through the beginning of our clip, it explodes and it comes out to maybe here. So let's uh, make a cut right there. I'm gonna drag this over because now as the clip gets reversed, we're gonna want that point right here to match up with it exploding so that it looks like it stops at that point and goes back together. And here's how I would do that. I'm gonna drag this clip over I'm gonna make a copy of my first clip so I know how long I need this one to be. I'm gonna actually reverse this clip right here and you can do it by selecting the clip, opening your inspector, go to change speed and you can click on the little reverse icon and now the clip is gonna play backwards. So that's what's gonna make it look like it's all coming back together. I'm gonna to close my inspector for now and just a little bonus tip here. Another way that you can reverse the clip is to right click, go to change clip speed and you can reverse clip right there. So you've got options like resolve. You can always do things many different ways. Now I know this bottom clip, I want it to match up right here, right with the rows. So I'm gonna make sure my clips all the way extended out and I'm gonna bring this back here. And now all I have to do is shorten up my clip. So in theory now, this point right here, when this clip is going backwards should match this clip right here. So let's just slide these together here. And then we're gonna see if it looks like they match up. And yeah, that looks perfect. Now you can add a freeze frame in the middle if you want. In this case, I'm not going to, uh, but I'm just gonna go ahead and delete my, my little reference clip there because I don't need that. But now we've got our rose. It's gonna explode. It's gonna go out to the point that we picked there to make the cut. And then it's gonna start to come back together until we have the entire rose and boom, it's all back together. Before we add in our sound effects here to really help sell this little sequence, I want to take a minute and thank the sponsor of today's video, and that is Motion Array. I've been a member at Motion Array for a long time. They actually have some free assets that you guys can jump on there, try out, see if it's something that you might be interested in. But having access to assets like Motion Array has, including stock footage, motion graphics, music, sound effects, photos, graphics, it really just gives you an opportunity to create things that you might not otherwise be able to if you didn't have access to create these assets on your own. And let's be honest, most of us can't create a lot of this stuff on our own, but I really enjoy jumping on motion, right? Finding some different types of footage or templates or something, and then creating something new here in DaVinci Resolve. It helps me learn, and it just gives me the opportunity to work with cool assets that I probably wouldn't be able to work with otherwise. And the video footage that we have of the exploding rows here, as well as all of the sound effects and a little bit of music all came from Motion Array. I'd encourage you to jump on there, check it out if you're looking for a one-stop shop for all kinds of great video assets that you can use to make your videos awesome. Check out Motion Array. I'll leave a link down in the description below if you're interested. So we have our video all set up. I like how this is looking so far. So let's start to add in some of our effects. So I know I want the explosion sound to happen when the rose explodes, right? I think that makes a lot of sense. So we have a bomb explosion here. This is what it sounds like. Perfect, so let's bring that down into the timeline. I'm just gonna use my playhead and find the spot where the rose starts to explode. Right about there looks good. So I'm gonna zoom in my timeline a little bit and I'm gonna put my explosion right there. Now you can name your audio tracks, explode. There we go. So now we should have a little explosion for our rose, a little sound effect there, let's see. All right, that works pretty good. We can make minor adjustments as we go along here if we want. Now the next thing that I wanna do is add in a little beeps for the countdown to kind of come in like a three, two, one, right? We're not gonna have any spoken word here, but the beeps I think could work out pretty good. So we're just literally gonna add three beeps here. So I'm gonna press O for an out point, drag this down into a new track, bring it all the way back to the beginning. And let's just see how that sounds. I'm gonna drop the volume down just a little bit. So that's a little close there, right? I think I want a little more space between the explosion and the beep. So I'm just gonna select these three and use my period key to bump them over a few frames. 
All right, I think that looks pretty good. I'm gonna fade the rose in here a little bit just to make it look a little bit better, I think. And this is what it's looking like. All right, I like that. I think that works out pretty good. So what else do we wanna add in here? We have a breaking rock. Here's what that sounds like. Now, I like the sound of that because it sounds like things and pieces falling, right? So let's bring that down into our timeline. And I actually want that to line up or be pretty close to where we have the rose exploding. I'm actually gonna move the sound effect up a little bit. I think it could go like right there maybe. So I'm gonna bring this one back here. Now, the part that I really want is the ending of this clip, not so much the beginning. So I'm gonna add in a couple of keyframes here just to kind of lower the beginning because we already have an explosion sound, so I don't really need two of them. So I'm just gonna add a few keyframes there, make the beginning a little quieter. It's okay if we still have it. And then I'm gonna make the ending a little bit louder. Let's see how that sounds. All right, I'm actually even gonna shorten the clip up, bring it back a little bit, extend out my keyframe there. And I think it's a little on the loud side, so I'm gonna drop it back just a little bit there. All right. Let's give it a little listen here from the beginning. All right, a little bit quieter there on the rock break. Now let's see what else we have here. We have a transform sound that I just thought might be kind of interesting as the rose comes back together, right? It's kind of like transforming sounds, it's like a transformer, right? I love me some transformers. So let's drag and drop that down into the timeline. And I'm gonna have to lower the volume down on that. And where do we wanna put that? Well, I kinda want it to happen be right before maybe the rose starts coming back together. So it starts to come back together right here. So if I zoom in a little bit, this clip kinda starts there. Let's just kinda see how that sounds. All right, not too bad. But one thing that I do notice is that as the rose comes back together, I want it to kind of start out slow and then go faster as it gets put back together here. So we can do that with some simple retiming. And to do that, I'm gonna zoom in a little here. We can select our clip. We can press Command or Control R. That's gonna bring up our retime controls. Now I wanna move the playhead to the point where I want it to start to speed up. So maybe like eh, right there looks good. I'm gonna click on this little arrow here and say add speed point. And for the second half, I wanna speed it up a little bit. So let's maybe make this, I don't know, 150%. Let's just see what that looks like. All right, not too bad. I think that's okay. So now we might wanna smoothen out that transition a little bit. Now it's not too noticeable here, but it's an important tip here to keep in mind that you can do this is select the clip again, right click, and we wanna come down to retime curve. So you'll see the retime curve come up here. So now I am on the retime speed right here, which is the one that we wanna take a look at. And I've got my one point right here. Now, if you need to zoom this up, cause it's hard to see, you can actually come over to this 300% here and zoom it this way. So that way it gets a little bigger for you. You can kind of see what you're looking at a little bit easier, but I'm gonna select the speed point or the keyframe right here. And I'm just gonna click on this option right there, which gives it a nice smoothed out look. So it'll ease into that speed up instead of just boom, go right into speeding up faster. Gonna close that up and that should be good to go for that. So let's just zoom out a little here. Let's take a look at the whole thing, see how it's coming together. We'll go one viewer here. All right, so with our effect, that sounds like a transformation. We can actually cut this once the rose gets back together. So let's just call it right here and make a Cut, gonna delete this part, fade it out a little bit, and actually maybe just extend it a little. A little fade on there. Now the other thing that I wanna do is I want it to sound like it's coming back together a little bit more. And one way that I can do that is to use our explosion effect and reverse that. So I'm gonna just bring this back to where our clip starts to reverse. I'm gonna make a copy of this clip holding Alt or Option on a Mac. Going to select my clip, right click, change clip speed, reverse speed, there we go. And so now our clip is gonna play in reverse. I'm gonna bring it together. And I wanna make sure that when the rose is done coming together, that's where the end of my sound is. So I'm gonna shrink this down a little bit, bring it this way, line it up the best I can, and then I can extend the clip back out. And you could put a crossfade on these if you wanted to. I don't know that it's necessary in this case, but uh, let's just see how it sounds now.
All right, so we are getting there. This is kind of exactly the effect that I'm going for. So now let's go ahead and add in our little bit of background music there. So I've got a new track here, Audio 5, and you should label all your tracks so you can keep track of everything real easily. You know what's what. But let's grab our song here, Explore Together Short 2. Put this in here, and let's just see how it sounds. I'm going to drop the volume of it because I mostly want to hear the sound effects. So I'm going to bring this down, let's say minus 16. See how that sounds. To see how that sounds to start with. Let's play through. All right, that's not too bad. I think that's all right. So a couple things I want to do. I might want to lower the music just a little bit, maybe just a little bit more. Another thing I want to do is fade out my rows. I want it to fade out at the end. So add a little fade in there. Then I also want my music to kind of fade out too. So I'm going to make a cut, delete the last half of my music there. And I actually want it to get a little bit louder at the end there. I think that could be kind of cool. So as the rose comes together right there, I want the music to be a little bit louder. So I'm just going to hold option or alt, click on the gain line down here and add in a few keyframes, boost up my volume a little bit. And then I'm going to add a fade out. We may even need to extend this a little bit. So the fade could be a little bit longer. And uh, let's just see how that sounded. All right, not bad. Now, I do need to check out my levels, right? And make sure none of my clips are too loud. Maybe these booms are a little loud. You know, I could bring them back just a wee little bit. Make sure that nothing's peeking over. Bring them back like a dB or a little less. And I'm just going to watch my meters here. Make sure that nothing's peeking and that it looks pretty good. Maybe we move our fade in a little bit for the music so it's not as drawn out. All right, I think that'll work. And there you go. We have an awesome little sequence there. A little bit of sound effects. One clip that we were able to reverse, blowing up the rows, bringing it back together. A little bit of music in there, a couple sound effects, and... I think we've got something that looks pretty cool. What do you guys think? Did you learn a little something in this video? Do you have questions on this process? Leave it down below. I'm happy to answer your questions. And again, a big thank you to Motion Array for sponsoring today's video. And the reason I love services like Motion Array is just because I can't create everything myself. And a place like Motion Array gives me the opportunity to use some awesome high quality assets to make cool stuff here in Resolve and just try things and make things like this exploding rose. So if you guys are interested in that, I'll leave a link down in the description below. You can check that out too. And with that said, that wraps up this one. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Peace.